Welcome to the Trash Cats Trash Cast. I'm Richard. I'm Steve. And boy, howdy, it's been a fucking week. Boy, howdy. Man. How's, how's your week actually been? You, you, you've had probably the, the, the worst one. Let's get the bad news out first. I don't know. I, well, I don't, I don't know if you guys are aware, but COVID is actually pretty lame. <laughs> <laughs> I made guys, it. Guys, it, it kind of sucks. <laughs> it's kind of lame. I made it, what, two and a half years and then catch it now when I, when I work from home. So dumb. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I, I guess that is somewhat of a benefit is that you're at home, but then <clears throat> the the downside to that is now you're at home and you're still required to do work. Yeah, and you know, of course, I got my girlfriend sick, so she's here. I'm using her computer at the moment for work, so we're both just like sitting around while I'm trying to get shit done. I feel bad she got sick after me. It's it's been a a whole thing. But compared to the original COVID, this was like nothing. But still, still not fun. And uh, the dizziness has been really weird. Lots of dizziness and lightheadedness. One one star, one out of five stars, uh, would not recommend COVID again. I would not recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, dude? It's been, uh, it's been a pretty wild one. Feels like we haven't Excuse talked me. in forever. <coughs> Oh, excuse me. Jesus Christ. I'm maybe I'm getting the COVID virus. I, the... I emailed you. Okay. You emailed me the COVID. <laughs> emailed me the COVID virus. <laughs> it's that Y2K shit all over again. <laughs> I had my um some family come up. My my aunts from Cincinnati came up to visit. Yeah. It was uh we had a good time. It was my mom's birthday last week, so they came up, they drove from Cincinnati. So the, these are, you know, they're not like old, old, but you know, they're older people. They're in their early and late seventies, I think. I mm-hmm. forget, but they made it most of the way here just fine. They got up into Michigan from from Cincinnati. It's you know it's a five hour drive or so. They made it up here, and then there's one exit in Detroit that's kind of confusing. Uh, just the signage and everything is confusing the way they have it. Like you have, you're on 75 and then it puts you on 275 while you're going around the city. And then you have to get off of 275. It's not like you continue on to anyways. They wound up in downtown Detroit and, you know, kind of later at night and they didn't know where they were or how to get back on the, the expressway. Do they not use GPS? They do not. Oh boy! They, they're a, not. They're not uh, the technologically literate like that. So that's a scary world without the GPS. Yeah. So <laughs> they uh, they first they they got off and they were like, all right, well while we're down here, uh, there's a gas station. Let's get gas. And they pulled over and immediately this dude apparently comes up to him <laughs> and like as as she opened her door even and was like, hey, it's my birthday. Let me pump <laughs> your gas for you. <laughs> <laughs> I love that salesmanship. That yeah. that is some hustle. It's my right birthday. There. Let me see. Puppy Where's my fucking you? birthday gift? <laughs> right. <laughs> and they are, of course, you know they're they're you know old ladies are like no no let's, we're not going to get gas here. Okay. Um. <laughs> so they're on the phone uh, with us, and we we managed to get them back on the seventy five. They get back on 75 and they've got about a half an hour drive still from downtown Detroit, you know, to where I'm at. And they, uh, they, <laughs> I guess they, they got off at an exit because they didn't get gas there. They got off somewhere else. And as they're pulling off, my aunt hits a curb oh, and shit. flattens her brand new tire. Oh, no. So thank goodness it's Dream Cruise weekend up here, which is like, you know, a bunch of car nerds. Um, is it like the old fancy cars? Uh, yeah, mostly. Yeah. It's like people with like their vintage cars and shit. And there's some people with like, you know, souped up uh, uh, Hellcats and shit, you know, come out too. But it's mostly those, like old classy cars. Those people are such losers. <laughs> <laughs> it's like and the most the, grotesque, the, like, <laughs> knowing <laughs> of wealth and antiques at the yeah. same time. <laughs> Antique road show <laughs> yeah. for mechanics on wheels. <laughs> they had, um, well, luckily be- because they were in town, there was a, uh, they pulled into, um, like the first lot off of the expressway where they turned off into. 
was a hotel. And there was a bunch of people there that were for there for the uh, event. Anyways, they were able to like, they were like, well, you know, we can get you, you know, we can, we can, you know, patch that up or we can put on a spare. And uh, she didn't have a spare. She, she had one, but it didn't have any air in it. So like, we'll, we'll patch it up. And so they, you know, one guy pulls a jack, a floor jack, not like a car jack, but like a floor jack out of somewhere and was like, you know, help her get that shit uh, set up. And at this point we're like, all right, well, we're, we're going to go down and meet you. And then you're just going to follow us the rest of the way. We're going to reprimand um, your vehicle. Yeah. <laughs> you to the house. <laughs> taking, taking your shit. Anyways, we, we get down there and, you know, they had patched it up. We drive for about like, you know, 10 seconds and the tires flat again. Oh. And it's like, all right, cool. So Dang. they had to call AAA and get <laughs> get uh, them to come out. And they, you know, swapped on. They put air in the old tire put that back on or put that one on and then put the, the shitty one in the back. I, I ended up taking my aunt home, one of my aunts back to the house early. Uh, yeah. but we still didn't like have sit down and like were able to chill with them until like 10 o'clock. That's um, a long day for them. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. They started early. So that was wild. And then we <laughs> just, uh, you know, a little shit. She brought her dog up. It was uh, it was a good time watching the, the dog fuck around with the cats and, Cats are fucking terrified. And what type of dog? Um, it is a poodle. That's cute. They can so, be vicious too. Some. Yeah, he, he was just a big old baby. He was just friendly oh. as can be. And Did it have the own, curls? Oh yeah, super curly. He was. I think he's one year old, maybe. So still a little pup. Yeah, he's just just a baby at heart. Mm. Uh, but yeah, there was there was uh, it was a lot of fun. We had good times. Chilling at the house for a couple of days. Yeah, it was. Um, it, it, I got you know three days off of work. You know while they were while they were in town, that was cool. That was super awesome. My boss to uh, you know give me that opportunity. He didn't have to. I even told him you know like I can cover some shifts, and he was like, no, no, like take take the time, do your you know, spend time with your family. And it's like all right, cool. Oh yeah, man, it's fucking I, awesome. I made the mistake. I signed up for a bunch of overtime right before I had COVID. So I was working, <laughs> I was working overtime while I was sick, too. I was so pissed. Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's how you do it, man. Just, uh, you know, uh, uh, just when you're, when you're down, through. yeah, w- when you're down, just, you know, find something that's going to put you further in the hole <laughs> and, and make you feel worse. <laughs> Got to hit rock bottom to get, yeah, to get exactly. better. Yeah, exactly. When you hit rock bottom, get a shovel. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's always more room to Uh-oh. dig. Yeah, there's more room to dig is right. <laughs> it, it is pretty amazing. No matter how bad things are, they really can always be worse. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> how could it possibly get any worse? <laughs> there is a way. <laughs> I, I love that... Um, that that's always been a favorite trope of mine in um in comedy shit especially but tv in general where it's like what could possibly go wrong whenever someone says that you know it's immediately going to cut to something's going to go wrong it's for it's a uh, foreshadowing something's going to go wrong oh, of course I, I i love i love that tool i love that that um trope i guess it would be i i, I think that's very funny Dude, I I feel like stand up has been like kind of lame the last year or so. <laughs> Fair. But I I recently watched one by Shane Gillis. It's a f- full special free on YouTube and it was really fucking funny. But he has this bit about uh <laughs> how when you become a heroin addict, it's basically like you're playing a version of Zelda where you have to go on quests every day. Suddenly, like, your life gets really busy, and you have to go on all these little quests. Like today, we have to mine copper, <laughs> 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 and it's it's really funny. His sister is an addict, and it's uh, he he make he just clowns on her so hard, but it's done in a re- really cool way. It felt it felt like um, I feel like with a lot of stand ups. Like, they have to fill time with material, and a lot of that stuff will be really funny, but often a really good special has, like, one or two stories where that's, like, the core of it, where that was, like, 
the emotional like like lodestone to the to the special. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And those those are always the parts that are meaningful and there there isn't enough of that sometimes. Yeah, I haven't actually watched stand up in a fucking long time. I um, have, but I've been disappointed by a lot of it. <laughs> that's fair. That's honestly that's part of it too, as I, I realized that I'd have there's a couple comedians I, I like their stand up shit a lot and you know you can only rewatch the same, you know, four specials so much. Dude, that Carlin uh, documentary is really worth the watch. Oh, yeah. I still haven't watched that. It's really fucking good. You know who recently put out an actually good special? And I, I like this comedian a lot, even though it can sometimes be corny, or he can sometimes be corny, is uh, it's Jim Gaffigan. I do not like that man. Oh, okay. man. <laughs> it, his, I, I will say his newest special is probably my, my favorite one he's done yet, but... I um, d- do hear from comedy people that he has some good stuff. I just really don't like him, so I can't get I can't give it an honest shot. You know, he gets a, a lot of props too because he has he does a clean set. Yeah, you know, it's you know so to do that and still be you know selling shows like he does is pretty remarkable. <sighs> Yeah, I just I just can't do him. But that's fair. Yeah, like my mom like likes him, and she doesn't like comedy. But she bought some cookbook he did. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that's how clean of a comedian he is. Yeah, that's fair. Oh Speaking man, I was I was actually just talking about um, your family earlier um, yesterday. I was talking with my boss about you know like next time I go down to Cincinnati, we talk about it. You know, we've mentioned it before, but I gotta I guess schedule some. Some time down there. I might be coming down there in October. My mom and, just uh, mentioned that at the last dinner. She's like, whenever Ricky's in town, love to cook. Oh, God, yeah. That's exactly what I was g- going to get to was just some, some doma, some... Didn't you say your mom does baklava? Yes, and it's so fucking good. Dude, like That's my favorite. Normally for Christmas, I get a big tin of baklava and I'll eat it for like two days straight. And just, just all, smash. <laughs> yeah, all of my calories are from honey and pie low dough or whatever. And I'm sick for like three days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got, we got some um, baklava for my mom's birthday. One of our the family friends brought it over and it was, it was good, but. It, you can tell they use like a simple syrup and not honey, mm-hmm. and it was just missing all that flavor, all that like texture. And it was, it was, it was, you know, it's still baklava. It's still better than most other desserts, but yeah, yeah, definitely wasn't the best baklava I've ever had. So I was like, man, now I, I gotta have the real it. shit. Yeah, man, I've been on an oats and ice kick. I just want to eat oat, hot oatmeal with a bowl of cold ice cream for once a day, or I feel incomplete. <laughs> <laughs> You've been on that kick for like, I don't think it's a kick anymore if it's been like five months. <laughs> it's just an eating disorder. <laughs> <laughs> Steven, you're not on a kick. You have a problem. <laughs> you, have a, you have an illness. Dude, I, I am like, everything I do is so addictive. My personality is just like, once I, I like something, it's I will eat it over and over. Like, everything's so cyclical. It's just, like, pure. <laughs> like, I do everything <laughs> like a heroin addict. because it's, <laughs> it's so ridiculous. But it, once I find a meal I like, I'm eating it for, like, a week straight until, like, I find something else. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Find something else, else or you completely get sick of it. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm that way with... Um, with watermelon, with, mm. with cer- certain foods, I was gonna say watermelon and like chili. You're a big melon guy, huh? <laughs> oh yeah, I've, oh yeah, I fucking love some love some good melons. Fucking watermelon, I always, you know, the, I've read things places where they're like, when you go to the store and you're looking at the watermelons, you know, you're you're in your head, you're like, I'm gonna get the biggest one. <laughs> it's like no, that's not a good idea because what's gonna happen is you're gonna take that home, you're gonna cut cut it in half. You can eat probably about a quarter of it, divide it amongst your family. You might, you know, if you got a big enough family, you might be able to spread that around 
you know, for a couple of days, but eventually it's going to be four or five days later. You're going to still have at least a quarter of that watermelon in your fucking fridge. I and you got to have to throw it away. I don't, and I don't know. I, I, I disagree with that. Yeah, yeah. Because I will destroy watermelon. Yeah, because it, it's such a healthy thing to eat, too. You're just staying hydrated, eating. Your, <laughs> it's, it's, it's just sugar and fiber. It goes yeah. right through you. <laughs> it's fruity flesh. It tastes like that's what I imagine a f- piece of fruit that is a cannibal, what that piece of fruit you're eating as a piece of fruit would taste like. Now, there does come a point where after having it for so many days in a row, it's an immediate like, nope, can't do watermelon again. I can't do it anymore. Do you do the salt? No, not really. I've I, Occasionally I will, but I usually just have it. I have it raw. Yeah, I, I occasionally do too. But it's a nice way to... To make sure you really, you, <laughs> to, to, you make sure you really swell up and get the yeah. full effect of the watermelon. Get, get all them electrolytes in you. <laughs> you need to hold all that watermelon juice in as long as possible. So, <laughs> There's, the first time I ever heard of people putting salt on watermelon, I was probably uh, eleven years old, and I was over at a girl's house, and they, her family was all over there watching a football game. And they had watermelon, and I was like, oh, yeah, sure, I'll have some. And they handed me a thing of salt. I was like, what's this for? They're like, you put it on your watermelon. And I thought they were fucking with me, and they were all doing it. <laughs> like, no, yeah, you just eat yeah, it like this. And they would eat it, and it's like, okay. And I tried it, and it was, you know, it's all right, but I'd rather just have plain watermelon. Yeah, I would most of the time. But every now and again, when... I'm sure you have heard this with being a chef, but the the thing like you, the food you crave or what your body is low in type of thing. Yeah, like yeah, if you're yeah. craving sugar, it's because you're you know, I I could see. So, I, so when I when I crave Taco Bell, <laughs> you're my body dog saying, meat. <laughs> you, you need to shovel this sawdust into you quick. <laughs> <laughs> Your body's low on sawdust and <laughs> <laughs> Your sawdust and cheese levels are low <laughs> Gotta hike those up right away Oh god damn Speaking um, of funny shit mm-hmm. <laughs> you see, uh, see that Trump can't find a lawyer? <laughs> yes <laughs> Dude how crazy would it be if he actually represented himself though? Oh uh, that would be incredible It would be it would be so funny, but it would be so bad. I, I'm, I am, I'm not one to like. <laughs> I don't have the patience to watch trials, like you know when they like show Court you know TV the. Shit. Yeah. yeah, it's it's kind of weird to me. I, I just don't have a lot of interest in it, but I would watch the shit out of that. I've I would w- take time off of work. <laughs> <laughs> I've watched most of the big trials this year because I. I work remotely. I can do whatever the fuck I want. So I just watch shit all day. But it, like, um, the Depp trial, Johnny Depp trial, like, yeah, I, don't, yeah. I don't under, it seems so unethical that these things are on TV. I really yeah. don't yeah. understand. The January 6th committee stuff made sense, but a lot of these, like, personal try especially when they're civil trials they're not even criminal right yeah. it's like what the fuck is happening like in you know all these new smart tvs you turn them on and they have like ads and shit like on the home page and there's mm. like ads for trials like pop yeah. <laughs> it's like what the fuck like it's sold as reality tv now it's really yeah. dark you, you want to watch these you want to watch these celebrities go at it have you seen how they do a lot of the streaming in Japan? Uh, no. I may be missing. I think it's China. But the 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 top streamers, it's set up like a multi-cam reality show with like hive like it looks like a new Netflix show where they have all the people in makeup, they have the scene set, they and it's all like the appearance of being real, but it's all on sets and stuff. And it'll be like a, a chick that streams 12 hours a day living a fake life 
that is basically like a Truman Show movie just for the benefit of it looking like a real thing someone, a real life someone is streaming. And the fans are like engaged like it's a normal person living their life. But it's like a perfect production stream. That's pretty wild. It's so dystopian. Yeah. So weird. There is something that can be said, like it could be interesting there you could do stuff with it but if it's just like i get you normal life shit it's just well they'll set up like drama scenes like oh they went to the mall this day and her friend has a crush on the same boy and then they have to have a a big conversation like it's meant to all look like it so so it's a soap opera yeah it's a soap opera fake that i get yeah that sounds interesting there's potential like if you if you had a thirty a person who streams for thirty years and their whole life is a a movie plot and it's all done perfect, like you can get people so engaged in this big narrative. I mean, it really would be Truman Show stuff, but it it's it feels dark too because like behind the scenes they showed this chick's room and they're they one of the interviewers goes to pick a book off the shelf in her room and it's a fake book glued to a bookshelf (laughs) you know (laughs) but you have people watching thinking they're like seeing a person's real life and it's so far from it you know have you ever seen um ikea heights no it's the ikea uh it's a soap opera that was filmed inside of an ikea oh that sounds that reminds me of the r kelly opera <sighs> it it went it went for uh several episodes before they were like noticed huh. um because they would like go in and like film it when no one was looking and you know like, they <laughs> they're not like they're like five minute episodes or so gotcha. um and eventually they get to a point where like i think the the ikea that they were recording in they um they Sponsor. ended up like telling them you can't record here anymore mm. uh, you can't do this anymore and uh, they found another IKEA location that was like, yeah, okay, you, you know, they have, like we want to, you know, do the last couple episodes, and they like let them do it, or, or at least they were more chill about it. But yeah, it's 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 pretty funny. It's pretty good shit. It's got fucking Randall Park in it. You would recognize it if you've seen him, but I forget. I feel like that, that name doesn't doesn't bring up the image of him unless you know the shit he's been in. Um, yeah. He's been in. Um, Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He played uh, Kim Jong-un on uh, the interview. Yeah, with the... Expo- Dude, th- I watched a, like two documentaries on that movie because that, that movie was so fucking crazy. Like, I remember, right. <laughs> I remember getting tickets to see it on its release at the Esquire, and there were, the U.S. put out a terrorist code thing. Yeah, like, yeah. And... Most theaters shut it down. I think the Esquire was the only one that played it in Cincinnati that week. And it, there was, like, security at the theaters and stuff. It was so wild. Yeah, people were people were uh, worried about that one. That's what the... Supposedly, that's all related to what the Sony hack was over, too. Was yeah, really- that's right. I forgot about that. Yeah, there's, they, it had, like, the downstream effects of that film were pretty nuts over a fucking ding dong movie about yeah i mean that and obama had to at the time had to go to bat for the movie to be released yeah that 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 was a real freedom of speech thing that happened like that could have had that could have changed our rights quite a bit if that movie didn't come out right long term uh but this is an interesting one this is uh it's on the court TV shit. I This feels dark and weird, but it's a court case of a woman who alleges her husband, I think they were split at the time, but still legally married, came to the house and tied her up, sexually assaulted her, and attempted to kill her. And the man is being charged with attempted murder, but he's representing himself in court. 
So it's the husband and the wife. Like on her uh, questioning, it's him questioning her directly. And oh, like, wow. So it's like he's like standing while she's at the stand. Like, so then what did I tie you up with? And like question by question, they're having to go through this. It feels like a private conversation between a husband and a wife trying to figure out or like both trying to prove their perspective to the other, but it just so happens to be in a courtroom. Jesus. It is, it is wild because I don't really know the full scoop. It sounds like she there could be some weird stuff on her end, but it sounds like she's most likely telling the truth. So you're, you're watching a guy who tried to kill a woman also be the lawyer trying to yeah. prove his innocence. Does but I, have, I don't like, know the details. I was going to say, like, if he is, like, a lawyer, like, by trade, like, that's his job, or he's just... I don't think he was, but it's, I believe, I believe I heard he had some background, because he, he is doing it fairly well. Like, he doesn't seem like a, like, they're still correcting him at times, but he doesn't seem like a, an idiot or an amateur up there. Too bad. He's watched a lot of Law & Order. <laughs> He's played all the Phoenix Wright games. It's just really interesting. I can't... I... God, man. I, I can't imagine having a personal problem that even goes to court. Like, how shitty that would be. But then to... Something that serious, like an alleged attempted murder or... Yeah. And you're on national TV. Like, say, I'm curious, even if you are a lawyer, you don't represent yourself, number one. No. But, yeah, that's the, uh, the intimacy of that is really weird. Now, what do you think? I, I really dislike when someone is facing, like, a murder sentence or um, a life sentence, whatever, and they don't speak for themselves on the defense. Like, they d decide not to take the stand because mm -hmm. lawyers tell you never to take the stand type of shit. Mm -hmm. I, I don't get that. I feel like if you're adamantly innocent, you have to speak for yourself at some right. point. I feel, I feel like even if it's not the smartest thing to do, by not doing so, if you're found guilty, the, the pain of knowing you didn't speak your truth your truth in your own words for yourself right would be just mind shattering sitting in prison knowing you didn't even stand up for yourself you just right. put your yeah your future in the hands of other people fuck that it kind of partially also depends on how good the other lawyers are but i still feel yeah, like even then yeah yeah i feel like you just have to you know, especially if you're innocent. I feel like maybe. Yeah, if you're especially if you're innocent. Yeah, if you did it, it, that's. And that's another thing. If you're willing to do that, that only aids to your, you know, the people believing that you're innocent. I think that, yeah, when, when you refuse to talk, I, I, though I get it is a, can be considered a wise decision, I, it, it seems sketchy, right? But yeah. just by nature, like, they're not, like, well, why can't they speak for themselves thing? It's because, is it because, that, you know, they are guilty and they don't want to fuck up? They're spineless, though. I feel like, I just feel like uh, there's some sort of cowardice in not being willing to, I don't know, take that chance for yourself that, to me, feels... Like an indic it, it shouldn't be an indicator of guilt, but it feels like one a mm. little bit. It's like pleading the fifth four hundred times. Yeah, thing. exactly. Yeah, or it's like it doesn't prove anything, but it it tells me something about you too. You know, right? Exactly. Speaking of which, <clears throat> remember uh, Farmer Bro Martin Screlly? Yeah, uh, yeah. Owner of the infamous Wu Tang album. <laughs> yeah. So he's been out of prison for a little while now. I've been giving periodical updates on 
him because I I find him to be a fascinating piece of shit, right? But, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but genius level person and incredibly fascinating. So he was dubbed, you know, the most hated man on earth for a little while for hiking up the HIV drugs. But as weird as he was, he had like a policy. If you messaged him that you couldn't afford your drugs, he would give you them for free for life. Like he, That's so weird. It, it is because he's so autistic, like not in a demeaning way, but like he thinks very autistically where he doesn't understand that he was ruining people's lives because he thought, hey, if you just reached out to me, I would have given it to you. Yeah. But he doesn't understand he was still destroying people's lives, right? Mm -hmm. So, goes to prison, not even for that, for doing illegal money management shit. He's been out for a little while. He decided to do a crypto coin, right? Mm -hmm. And he had... He spoke to Destiny when he first got out of prison. That was the first person he spoke to. And they weren't previously friends. And they did like an interview thing. Destiny joked about him making a crypto coin just a rug pool. <laughs> and uh, Martin Screlly said, I would never do that. I'm a man of integrity and only poor people rug pool. I ride to the moon. <laughs> he ends up making a crypto coin. <laughs> It's got half a million of people's money in it. Rug pulls. <laughs> now, here's what's interesting, though. He claimed, because he's on probation, right? Mm -hmm. And he was like a multi, multi, multi millionaire. Hundreds of millions of dollars running head fund, hedge fund businesses and shit mm -hmm. at, before he was 18. Very, very, very smart. And he live streams his entire life. So right now you can get on YouTube and watch him live and he only has a hundred people live. He was the most hated man in the world. His location is publicly available. He will take a phone call with anyone at any time and you can watch him all day. It is so bizarre, right? Yeah, that's fucking weird. Like I sit in his chat sometimes as he analyzes uh, stocks and does like business evaluations so he made this crypto coin. There was like 400,000 in it or some shit. And his side of the story is that he downloaded an illegal torrent for porn. It was a porn torrent. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it, the suspicious part is the torrent had only been live for three days. So it was a new torrent. He goes to download some porn on stream. And uh, it had a rat, a remote access, whatever mm -hmm. device target. Someone has control of his computer, steals all the money in rug pools. The crypto's destroyed. Now, the, he says he would never do that because he's on probation. He can go back to prison for a long time. And he has much more money than 400000 So why would he ruin his reputation and risk his freedom? But... He also is a very crafty, sneaky man. It's like if he if if he's got that much money, why is he torrenting porn? Well, uh, I don't I don't know if I agree with you there. Why wouldn't you torrent porn? Is the question. I'm, well, play. what I'm saying is if well, first of all, you Who wouldn't pays because for porn? exactly it's all available for free. If there's something that you really want, that's like behind a paywall for whatever reason. No, some people feel, are connoisseurs. Build a an archive, a, a library. Sure, yeah, but <laughs> I would never. But I but if, I do understand. But it's also the thing where if you've got that kind of money, and that kind of money is fuck you money. Why why wouldn't you? Because he's a little internet boy. He's how little, much how much does does a, a porn cost? How much is one porn? <laughs> Can I get one? There, you can't even buy one porn. It's all just buy monthly one porn. subscriptions. It's oh, be, yeah. You know? But, so it was something specific, I would imagine, to download one torrent of it. But it, it's hard to know if he's telling the truth or not. But yeah, just, that sounds like horseshit to me. 
I don't know, though, because it's just such a risk for such a low payoff unless he's completely broke and hiding it, which is possible because he sold that Wu-Tang album to cover his uh, his court shit. So. The other question would be, so if there's... If he's the one that gains the money from doing... So it'd be one thing if it was like they got remote access into his computer and then like had the money then wired somewhere else well he they found the person's bitcoin wallet that did it so let's say me and you were going to do this i would set up a torrent that has a rat in it Mm -hmm. and i have you download it three days later and that gives you a perfect alibi because you torrents are random you don't know who the fuck put that up there but your right. friend steals all the money, puts it in their crypto wallet, and you just get it from them whenever, you know? Yeah. And it and that shows that you didn't do it, in theory. But if you're relatively tech-savvy, that's, like, really basic shit. I think that's also one of, the, one of those things that's, like, unless he's getting it, it... So, in that case where someone did that for him... Mm-hmm. And then the idea would be like he would get, you know, maybe they get a cut or whatever, but he's getting, you know, uh, I would assume most of that money sure, you given to him. It's not like it can come over all at once. If he's on probation for money shit, they're probably watching his bank accounts and shit like a hawk. Well, that's the nice part about crypto. You don't, you could take it all at once as long as you. Oh, yeah, it's crypto shit. Yeah, as long as you're hiding, you know, your browser shit. It can just sit in your crypto wallet, which is really interesting. <sighs> so up, up to 2% of Texas's power, right? You know, like they're the only, I believe they're the only state with their own independent gri- electrical grid. Yeah, yeah. So all of these crypto mining companies, I, I don't know how familiar you are, you are. These companies, they set up all of these processing, computer processors and right, they right, mine yeah. for crypto. Two percent of Texas' entire yearly electrical power is people mining crypto. There are these warehouses being set up that are like Amazon size warehouses, just full of computer processors running at incredible heat. They have to build it like water cooling systems like a nuclear power plant and air chimneys that export hot air, like massive, like thousands. Fucking wild. Dude, it is nuts. 2% of Texas is energy and it's growing like very fast. In three years, it's gone to 2% of their entire power budget. In the next year, it might be three, 4%. God damn. So it's like incredible amounts. So there's, these talks of trying to change how the blockchain works instead of every computer working on it independently, they'd be working more together because the amount of energy it's taking has become uh, just so inefficient. It's potentially dangerous, but there's a interesting aspect. Texas also has all these um, uh, natural gas wells, right? Mm Mm-hmm. And they're like old ones, like for 50, 60 years ago, that were initially made to connect with gas pipelines that are no longer in use, right? right. So they're they're just natural gas wells that, I, I forget if they call it leaking or flaring uh, natural gas into the environment. You can't see it, but right. you know, like how the light, like a keep a flame going constantly on like an oil well thing. It, it's like, like that. Violet, yeah. Yeah, it's like that, but there's no flame and it's just leaching natural gas into the environment doing a ton of damage, right? <laughs> so there's all these wells like that across Texas. And there's a couple companies now that they come to the leaking well, they cap it and run that leaking natural gas to generators in a trailer. And then they connect a shipping container full of the computers that mine Bitcoin. So they're taking natural gas that was going to hurt the environment a lot 
and they're turning it into power and then making money out of it on crypto, which is actually pretty fucking dope. Yeah. But that's a, you know, very like small portion of it because those people can no longer keep up with these companies that have massive like nuclear plants of crypto. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Such a wild problem. Yeah, weird, weird shit. That's a weird problem to have, right? If you, if you were to try to explain that to somebody, fucking twenty years ago, even. Yeah, I can't wait till we have a trash cat coin. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be worthless. That's how it, it we, should be. <laughs> we almost, we almost, we should have, we should have an NFT, and it'd be like we each make one and then sell it to each other. <laughs> <laughs> And that's it. <laughs> we give it away to somebody up for a fan. <laughs> All right, how it's about- completely worth. It's worth like a you know, a, you, you actually you're in debt by buying it. <laughs> you <laughs> or by trash. owning it. Yeah, trash forever. Now here's a. I think I sent you this one. The this is like the newest body mod that I had, I had seen in a little <laughs> yeah. while. Yeah. <laughs> this rapper Dan Sir, he's a reggaeton rapper from Mexico. His music's garbage, but he has a uh, gold chains implanted in his scalp for hair. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the the look he normally does with it is pretty lame, but there were a couple pictures I I didn't have time to send to you that look dope as fuck. Because his head, basically, he has gold hooks subcutaneously implanted under his scalp, shaved head, so you see, instead of like the metal horns, you see little hooks, and then he attaches gold chains to him, and he has a couple looks that are like almost samurai-esque, where like, you have like a cluster of chains in the back, and then like chains hanging from hooks in the front with like a, a pendant that rests on his forehead like so many cool possibilities with it but man it's pretty it's like uh the body armor plate plating you know like people are going pretty hard with some of this new shit yeah i you sent me you sent me the um link to this dude and i was sitting with my my family (laughs) when you did so i just passed around the phone like this is what this is what rappers are doing now (laughs) yeah it's I mean, it's 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 whatever. I guess it's, it's it's original for sure. I can't I can't even hate on it for that. I, it really seems like people have feel like they have to push the limit farther, especially with rap, but just to be noticed in general, like with the internet culture, with fame, shit, with greed. Like you you have to like keep pushing the envelope to the next level, and it, it's getting to pretty pretty alien like results pretty quickly. Yeah, that's it's hmm. I mean also I I keep I can't help but look at this and think like, man, imagine like imagine someone trying to gank your chain. Yeah. Like that and just like just grab a handful of them and just rip. Rip a big piece of scalp out. Right. Like that's been a thing for a long time with with you mean rappers in general, like the the rap communities? There's like a an economy based on like stealing people's chains. Yeah, it's fucking dope. It's fu- I love when rappers get their chains took. I mean, yeah. so <laughs> it's <happy>. so fucking good, <laughs> dude. I found a. It's, the, it's like the highest disrespect. It's yeah, like- I I found a whole new world <laughs> of gang vods. Okay. <laughs> so like in Chirac, like gangs live streaming and making VODs of their gang wars. You say Chirac? Yeah. <laughs> Chicago, what? Iraq. That's what they, <laughs> I never That's what they that. call the it's kind of weird. So like they'll record beefs with each other. They're like writing of raps and shit, and then like They'll actually like record drive bys and like murders and shit, and put it online. God damn! And it it it's pretty fucking nuts because there's like detailed chronicles 
of the lores of the different gangs and you can like see all of the tweets different video clips like it it's like so everything is so i don't know recorded it's absolutely wild oh damn like because i i technically work for a, i contract for a hospital in chicago some of these weird like gangland shootings and stuff will end up in my er it's pretty wild yeah that's i mean even just the i don't know just the, the posting the shit and being so open about it that's and it's crazy because now with like with rico shit like if you're saying openly you're a gang member of this sect right they mm-hmm. can arrest you and everyone on murder shit for for murders they already know your gang has committed right they don't need a fresh charge each time like that's they've used rico for shit like that all the time so if you're just openly affiliated you're already fucked they can take you anytime but these but they don't because it would be so many people so but you're like always at risk you know like you're mm-hmm. you're just so visible like the feds cops in chicago they they are watching all your shit they know exactly what you're doing right, who you're exactly. doing it with and they can and you're just making it easy in. yeah so easy that that to me is just absurd i've had multiple friends get busted on probation for posting pictures on social media and i always kind of thought that was like ah that they're kind of full of shit and then you watch them get picked up for a social media post it's like you're just telling on yourself right so um, we there had to have been there might there might still be pictures somewhere of like when we were in high school age and like partying and smoking and drinking and shit there were some but i think they're gone now yeah i know i went through a few years ago and you know deleted a bunch of shit that even like was remotely looked like we were like partying in any kind of way any kind of capacity just it, like not i wasn't really worried for me but like for i mean that's so make it a job or something yeah exactly yeah. like it's just it shows up and it's long enough ago that it's not like a you know they're not fucking doing crimes and shit now because of that but i i kind of get it though because i i it's been a long time but i used to have hella incriminating shit of mm-hmm. myself online and it, it it's just like uh um, i feel i don't specifically know the gang world to that degree at all but i feel like when you're just that far in there is no other world and you don't give a shit at all like yeah true you know, like I could see that when you case. live every day of your life, like you're you're going to die, or you you already know there's so much you could go to prison for. There's like no point of living opaquely. Like everything's transparent at that point when you're like openly life or death all the time, right? But fuck, it's just that's just a really rough, and they're all like. 16 and shit like catching multiple bodies it's like fuck what a fucking life yeah so fucked all right do you got anything i do got some art stuff we could do uh yeah let's talk about it all right i sent you a message so this is a uh, an instagram page called solo show it's solo s-o-l-o and it's underscore like three or four times that's kind of a shitty username and then show (laughs) but i thought this was all one artist because the aesthetic is so consistent it's like yeah heroin chic trash vibe gnarliness but after doing some investigating it's a page that any artist can submit to and the concept is that you take your art and you do a a pretend solo exhibition outside, and you kind of, you know, you would want it to match the aesthetic they go for, but it's people going to, like, 
abandoned houses or under bridges or random outdoor or outside of her traditional gallery environment and displaying their art as if it's like found. That's cool. I do like that. Actually really cool. And so much, a bunch of it's not my stuff, but I love how gritty and grimy the shit is. And then it, there, there's all of this, a lot of it's like sculpture but there's also a ton of black metal graffiti writers that I did not know it was as big of a thing as it is. And like, they're the type of artists that they don't even have art pages or Instagrams. Like they're real street graffiti writers and they specialize in this grimy, dirty black metal style. That is so cool. And one, one of the dudes, he does a, 3d graffiti in a black metal style where he basically like sculpts the graffiti out of some material and then pastes it to the wall oh that's dope and it is like so fucking gross and brutal looking yeah i'm I'm very into that yeah i just think there's so much cool stuff here I, i i wanted to take i wanted to do one and send some stuff to them but i i've always wanted to do um like i have a bunch of ideas how it'd like to display my work but one of the, one of the things i wanted to do was like video displays of something interactive with prints of my work like to do videos of like a sculptural hanging of like imagine 30 pieces of art hanging on wires like um like a house of cards Mm -hmm. in a really unique design and then lighting the bottom print on fire and recording the video. So it's almost like, like a changing sculpture, a video of a changing sculpture. I like the idea of burning a piece of art, but so many, so many of these are so cool. So I want to, I'm going to do something and submit it. It's really like black metal punky shit that matches your vibe you can you can hit that maybe not you like, yeah. shouldn't say it matches your vibe but you can match that vibe yeah because a lot of this stuff i don't like by itself but as a collective aesthetic i love yeah i agree and when when you first sent me the link i also i thought it was just one artist it's um, so consistent yeah there's definitely you know these different artists are they're fucking they're nailing it yeah i really like collective stuff like that it's got a bit of the chrome type vibe too to valhalla in chrome <laughs> yeah wow a lot of this graffiti is fucking bonkers wicked right i was trying yeah, to find cool the 3d graffiti stuff uh, i'll send it to you later if i find it. but some really Really cool stuff. What was that? Th- uh, uh, this is different. This is like sculptural graffiti. What was the graffiti artist we liked that does the actual 3D, like floating? Ooh, I st- forget his name. St- starts with a B. We need to do our uh, graffiti episode again at some point. Oh, yeah. We never released that, huh? No, we didn't. Because I was I was early days and we had a recording error. <laughs> oh. But we yeah, it was a street art graffiti episode. Oh, that's right, and we couldn't find the notes for it. That's part I, of what our That's why we didn't redo it. <laughs> that was before we got organized. Isn't it crazy we've done this almost what, a year and a half going on? Two years, maybe? Yeah, we'll be going on two years here in a, in a couple months. God, two months. So wild. Right? I, it's so cool that a lot of these 3D graffiti artists, though, you basically, generally, to get the, the most 3D effect, you start in the corner of a couple walls, and you do, like, the math or projections, and you, you are writing at a force perspective that makes it look like your graffiti words or letters are floating over the corner of a room. 
and it, it photographs so well. I can't believe we can't remember this guy's name, though. I know there was, um... He does animals, too. I was like, uh, I know Odith was the one we talked about. Od, uh, that's him. Odith? Yeah, Odith. He's, he's one of the better, if not best, 3D writer. Yeah, he's kind of a monster. Absolute monster. What was the other one? Was, um, Dame or Dime? D-A-I-M? I think it was... Dime, yeah, some cool shit. Yeah, what about you? Any any art stuff you've been into lately, or anything you're um, working on? I plugged my tablet in for the first time, yay, and started That's playing cool. with it. I I dig it. I feel like um, I'm not gonna get what I want out of it working in GIMP. The the recommended piece that um or or um application that Drawfee's been using a lot more. They they're usually Photoshop people. They Pro, uh, procreate. Uh no, they've been using uh Clip Studio, uh Clip Studio P- uh, Paint Pro. Nice. Um and they they really free? dig it. Uh no, it's it's a one time payment though. Oh, okay. uh, you pay once and you have it for life and it's like I think it's like fifty bucks or something. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah, but they, they really dig it. They're like it's got you know, it makes you know, where Photoshop is like, it's for, it's made to, what it was made for was doctoring photos, but people draw on it or, you know, use the to, to draw. So they just made it a little bit more accessible for that. Mm-hmm. Clip Studio is like, it's made to do like drawing pieces in, uh, and animation. You can do animation with it. Yeah. So it's like, all right, cool. I can, uh, I'll fuck around with that and. You know, I'll play with it probably a little bit more first, but I'm probably going to get Clip Studio the next paycheck I get. Oh, yeah. And I'll definitely, I definitely look forward to uh, fucking around with it more this winter time. I'm going to take an approach. I realize that I, I can't go into it like I know what I'm doing. Like, because with pencil and paper, I know what I'm doing. But it's very, it's such a different media. Just the feel of it. The look of it, it's. I got to get used to it first. So you'll get you'll get there quick, though. Yeah, sure. I'd realize inking is going to be, you know, like or making fine lines is going to be a little bit more difficult. I'm used to being able to like use a pencil to kind of like, you know, you, you get a couple lines in there, and then like I usually end up using an eraser to like find the correct line. Sometimes like carve it out of that. Can I give you a couple of small tips I think you'll like? Yeah, sure. Have you watched, he's a video essayist. Have you listened to any of Beige Frequency by chance? I have not. He has a really good style. He he works on portraits of people he does video essays on. And it's all tablet drawing. You said Beige um, Frequency? Beige, yeah. The really cool advantage to digital drawing is you have a perfect eraser and that is just as much a tool to draw as the drawing itself. Right. Yeah. And then also instead of like worrying about a really fine line and those type of things, you, it's really nice to, to paint each color on a different layer, but to do like, like an underpainting your thumbnail sketch and then to in a light blue and then like use a gray as your next and to build those yeah. layers and erase shit. And then to make the paintings look really, really realistic, you can use your blurs to to fill shit or to blend those strokes or to carve out um, a nice gradient to put a fine line on. Uh, yeah, and, and there's so many different cool brush tools you can use and like – definitely. One of the cool things that um, Jaffe's been doing a lot that I think is really cool is instead of having a white canvas, they make it like just yeah. gray. Yeah, just a little bit gray. And Definitely. so they can add white highlights to shit. You know, they, they do, you know, they're, they're black ink drawing usually. And, and they'll, they will, when they spend more time on a piece, they'll, you know, they will do the red underlining and stuff. And I, I thought that was interesting. I, the reason they said they do that is because it, you see it differently. Like black looks more permanent. Red 
has more of a, you know, has or a different color, has a, a feel of like, okay, well, you know, it's not permanent. It's a little more free and opening and you can get more loose with it and it doesn't matter. Yeah. And it lets you be a little bit more creative than using black. And it's like, all right, cool. I, I really dig that. So, you know, they'll have processes where they go through so many different layers uh you know the the rough initial sketch and then they build off of that in a second layer and then you know and then they they might even do another one before they actually go and ink it and finalize it i think that's that's pretty fucking cool i i want to play with it more i want to get into it but i realize that i just have to take a different approach to it it's not going to be the same thing i'm going to get frustrated because it's I can draw on paper yeah, quite well, so learning the new tool is going to be There was a, a notebook. I, I went to get my brother for his birthday one year. I ended up not getting it, but we, we did the, the, color, the color blind glasses instead, which actually yeah. really, really yeah, worked. Way, way better. Yeah, but there's these notebooks you can buy, and they're they're a little pricey, but they're not crazy expensive. But the in the binding of the book, of the notebook, is some sort of like magnetic cell. And it comes with a, it's a real pencil, but it also has a magnet in it that tracks to the notebook itself. And you can write real notes, like a regular notebook but it tracks your pen movements and gives mm. you a digital copy automatically of anything you've wrote in that notebook. Oh. So like as you're right, like you could be on the beach taking notes on something. And meanwhile, on your computer at home is an updated version of that notebook in digital form being sent by Wi-Fi at all times. That's pretty dope. That's really cool for real. Like you would never lose anything that, you know, like you'd have these digital hard, you know, digital hard copies of anything you put in that sketchbook. Like, that's so cool. And like, true, you could like use Google Docs and shit like that or use like, even sure. like your note thing on your phone. But like the, the, it feels more romantic that way to have a, to feel like you're writing notes, to, to have like the. It's almost magical. It's like teleportation. Yeah. It's cool shit. It could be like an encrypted too. So, you know, you have this like, like there's a, not necessarily a journal, but notebooks where you put something intensely personal or private in are special. Like that is a, a sacred thing for sure. There is, there is a really cool thing with technology, especially now more than ever, that you know, the things that we, especially in media for such a long time, we consider to be like fantasy. Um, you know, we consider to be, uh, or even like, like beyond sci-fi where it's, you know, something like that, where you're writing notes and it's teleporting, like, ma you know, it magically appears somewhere else. It's like, that's, you know, that's really a D and D thing where like you write in a notebook and someone, uh, you know, someone else is holding another notebook somewhere else and it appears there and there's. So you can like send you know messages to each other that way, it's like that's a D and D thing, and I think that's more and more now that we have the ability to do crazy shit with technology. It's you know, uh, you know, they say like a lot of technology was inspired. Necessity. I was gonna say it's inspired by uh, sci-fi, you know, mm -hmm. like old um, Star Trek shit. Like that's one of the reasons that like. They were the first ones to be talking about like a, the little communicator where you can see the yeah. other person, you know, thing. And it's like, that's, you know, the, the smartphones and shit like that, having that ability to do that. It's, you know, we might've gotten there, you know, otherwise, but that's yeah. directly a, a line. You can draw a line directly to that. And I think that it's cool thinking of different fantasy shit, like, you know, magic in general kind of shit that like, it's what we're doing. I mean, anything really technological, you take back, you know, a few hundred years and people are going to call you a witch. <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I think it's cool. I think it's fun that we, it's definitely a cool time to live in for that reason of seeing, you know, that we can push boundaries in a way that 
we, you know, never really thought were actually possible outside of, you know, fantasy. Yeah. I love tech stuff so much, but I, I really do hate tech aesthetic. Like I, I, yeah, yeah. There is some, some goofiness to that. I, I wish things felt more organic, which why I think that notebook is kind of appealing because it doesn't feel like a, a screen, you know, Mm -hmm. but Hey, uh, I'll be right back super quick. I have to pee. Man, I'll tell you what, not, mm-hmm. nothing like a good old sink pee. <laughs> <laughs> nothing are, like pissing in the sink. <laughs> that's the best. I feel like if a you're, rebel. If your boyfriend says he doesn't piss in the sink, he's a goddamn liar. You're absolutely, <laughs> he's a liar. Especially when you're at your parents' house. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's just not to not get his off parents' house. Your parents' house. <laughs> <laughs> I think I told you about it, but I'm so. I'm getting the new computer soonish, but I have to. I'm trying to figure out my monitors. And I'm I'm really excited to get this, although it's way more expensive than I'd like. But I'm finally going to get a color matching system. Oh, dope! Yeah, I need to be able to calibrate my monitors to be exactly the same color profiles, as well as to my my art printer. It's a very special printer. And I need to be able to get my prints to match my exact colors on a monitor, which is actually like so much more complicated than it sounds like. It seems like it would be so easy, but in reality, you know, I'm using expensive paper and ink. This ink is so fucking expensive. It's crazy, but you print something and it might look really nice, but if you're not getting exactly the colors you want, Without a way to calibrate it perfectly, you're just manually adjusting settings and color profiles and shit, trying to get the best result you can. But they make these color calibrating systems, and it's it it looks like a webcam, mm-hmm. but you basically can stick it to your screen or monitor with a suction cup, and it will sample the color luminance of your monitors like a and it'll be like a crazy looking pattern of a bunch of different colors like a one of those printer test sheets when you have a new printer yeah yeah and it will scan all of those and then you print that same pattern from your printer and scan that and it'll find the differences in color to help you adjust until they're the same so you can get perfect results across different prints or screens and stuff and they're That's expensive. Fucking dope. Yeah, they're so cool. They're expensive though. They're like hundreds of dollars. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can see where, you know, with what you do though, that's yeah. Pretty critical. It it will be. I uh, it'll be I'm really excited to have a new setup. I've never had uh, a real setup of any kind before so this will be it's exciting but man a lot like we were doing the the absurd trolley last week that question of would you give up your your entire life savings to to help a person it's like um how many hours of your time do you want to give up to earn something like a, a new right. computer a, <laughs> color matching system food i had to buy a bunch of food through that like kroger p- curbside pickup because right. we both had yeah. covid we're covered in icky germs and man it's sometimes it's hard to cough up 100 bucks even for food you know it's like fuck yeah, this was a I, day in my life i will say i feel like the online like the the ordering your groceries through the app kind of thing i I definitely spend less money that way. I don't usually really? do it anymore because I can easily go to the grocery store on the way home. But yeah, that's a because I spend more. Like when I'm when I'm out at the grocery store, there's more chances of impulse buys, or it's like I'm looking at different options, and it's like yeah, I'll just 
let me get fat one or, you know, I'll usually I'll, you know, find, I'll look for the cheaper thing, but I'll, I'm more likely to buy more shit than if I'm just buying like stuff online. It's like, I'm just getting the shit that I need. See, I, I hate the grocery store more than any other errand. I would rather, I would rather go, <laughs> I'd rather go to the bank five times than go to the grocery store once. Oh, I, I absolutely hate disagree. The grocery store. I love going to the grocery store. <laughs> <laughs> it's the worst, man. I've, I've, especially with my various kitchen jobs at most restaurants I've, you know, worked at, I've had to do grocery runs for that job or like there's certain stuff we can't get from a provider. So we just get it from, you know, Costco or from, you know, Kroger or whatever. So I would go at this, it's just at Joe bar alone. I just, at this one fucking bar I worked at, we, I was at the Asian grocery three times a week and I would be in Kroger probably four times a week. That's um, a lot. <laughs> yeah. And it, like, just for that, like I, sometimes I, I, I wouldn't even be able to get my own shit because I'd be like on my way into work right. picking up the shit. So it's not like I could buy my own groceries and then get out. Like I'd still had to get groceries after that. But I feel like that was a, I don't know. I, I enjoyed it for the most part. I, cause I, I know my way around grocery stores now to a point that I don't know. It's like I like I know what the fuck I'm doing in there. Yeah, I just fucking hate it so much. And there's nothing. There's no feel a better feeling than going into the grocery store and you're wearing like chef uniform, and you're standing next <laughs> to people that are like don't know what the fuck they're looking at or what they're looking for. Or they're like, you know, trying to Citizens. buy something. Yeah. 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 Regular, <laughs> regular, uh, pedestrians. Yeah. They're, they're buying shit for, you know, a uh, recipe or whatever. And I, you, you look- know, you, you pick something up and they're like, Oh, is that good? And you're like, Oh yeah, this is, you know, like whatever brand of hot sauce or whatever. And they're like, Oh, you know, instead of getting a uh, fucking Sriracha this time, maybe they'll, they'll get some, some, uh, ch- Cholula. You look my, over my at, girl Cholula. <laughs> you look over at their cart and they got some garlic and onions, and you're like, "Do you even know what to do with that?" <laughs> <laughs> they look down at the floor and say, "No." <laughs> <laughs> I actually I did think about for the for a little while, especially during um you know when everyone was quarantining real hard, doing a instructional video series of like just basic kitchen shit, like not like. Like big shit, like how to do like really elaborate shit, but like how to, you know, properly cut up a watermelon for the most efficiency. Like, so you don't make a a bunch of mess, number one. So you don't have a lot of loss, number two, you know, and you can store it more effectively. Shit like that. Or, you know, and how to do it the easy way without fucking cutting yourself. Or, you know, there's plenty of videos for like how to properly dice an onion and shit but doing it in a way that's more fun i guess and and not so sterile man every time that that new show newest show the bear i'm like maybe halfway through and man it's so good but it's it's so weird because the lead character looks just like tony my brother Mm-hmm. Who passed, and so I ha- have a lot of like nostalgic vibes with that. But it, what he's going through reminds me of you. And oh yeah, that that show is a. I mean, it, obviously not like one for one on like just the whole premise of the show thing, but like the experiences of that show give me PTSD. Like there's so many things that I have either seen or done or just relate to on a, like a absolutely been there level. There is like the fucking first episode, like early on in the first episode, he's like, doesn't have enough money to get the groceries that he needs for the, for like the shift that night. So he goes out. Yeah. It goes out and sells a bunch of his own shit (laughs) to make that happen. It's like, yo, been there like not even like Damn. like selling my own shit because i you know i haven't had my own you know name attached to it but like i've still had like 
stuff that I wanted to do or stuff that I needed to get done. And like, if I had waited for my boss to go out and buy it, it would have, you know, taken for fucking ever and we wouldn't been able to. So I just go out and buy it myself. And it's just like spending my own money just to get through, just get, get through one night of service kind of shit. And it's like, I, f- I feel that, or, you know, there is a one where she's in the walk in and, there's a fucking pot of – there's a Cambro full of stock on a really high shelf and she's getting it, it down. Was, it was fat. It was uh, – it, it, was, was, uh, it was veal stock. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and she she was reaching up to grab it and then – oh. <laughs> it, I just – from the, the minute – the minute that they showed her like about to go for it and someone else offered the help and yeah. she was pissed off and was like, no, I knew – I knew exactly yeah. what was going to happen. First of all, don't put heavy shit that high up. Just don't Especially do it. Liquid. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, but I've that, also like I've had to clean up messes like that before. Oh, I believe it. That, I had, that, I had a, a guy, a, a fucking dishwasher. We're on our way out the door. He goes to he grabs onto this shelf to like turn a corner really quick, and he shakes the 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 thing too hard in a. Uh, three gallons of oil in a fucking five gallon jug fall down on the floor. There's oh. three gallons of oil fucking everywhere. Oh, that's terrible. We're what? on our way out the fucking door. Stayed there for at least another hour, probably about at an hour least. and a half. What do you even clean that with? Like we mobs, use towels. all the rags. Well, you, you got to sop it up with something dry first because you yeah. just you know if you hit it with water, you're just moving it, Ugh. and you can't have that slick floor back there. So. Yeah, we're we we use up all of the uh, the you know we get rental like rags from a rental service kind of thing, and they sh- basically they drop some off and you don't have any they don't come back till next week. Right. And it was like right before the weekend, and they had just dropped some off a couple of days ago. <laughs> so we used up almost all of a the rags. Like, yeah, yeah, we're going through like the the you know the dirty rags first, and we're trying to use those up. And like we destroyed all those and then we break out the clean ones and we're just trying to soak up as much as possible. And I still, you know, like we mopped a little bit, but because we're just spreading it around, I ended up just dumping salt all over the floor. So I had to text my chef like, hey, we're out of oil now and we're out (laughs) and and we're out of – and we're we're, – yeah, we we need salt, <laughs> and uh, also we only have uh, one bag of rags left for the rest of the week. And so, like- <laughs> so I, I I feel like I can relate to so many people in that show. Like I've met different forms of those people. Yeah, uh, that the black dude who cooks the is the baker who does mm-hmm. the cakes. He's especially cool. I, yeah. I liked him a lot. Yeah, I like his character a lot. But, but I had one concept, and you may not have seen this episode, but it won't it won't be a spoiler. But there was one concept I wanted to run by you because I I relate to his character the by far the most. Mm-hmm. The older cousin that's mm-hmm. kind of still a drug addict kind of a mess but kind of kept things together for a while in one of the episodes we see like his backstory kind of unfold where he's a lot deeper and more complicated than kind of the goofy asshole he initially comes off as right right he really gained gains a depth of character the more we see of him but we, he starts to some some things happen, but we start to see how the bar across the street goes out of business, and you know people from his lives that used to be there are no no longer there at the restaurant, or they're they're dead, or we we see him really struggle to cope with that, mm-hmm. and there's a part where just. trying to word it perfectly or or well but we see like even the neighborhood criminals get arrested and they're not standing on the block anymore and he's just out there smoking a cigarette watching them you know presumably go to jail for the night and he is like crushed and he he talks a lot about gentrification and the good old times and 
how it used to be and all those type of things. And I, I was talking to Sarah about this a bit and it feels like, and everything was changing for the better, mm -hmm. but he couldn't feel that at all. Like he was out outdated or couldn't keep up with the times and to see everything else get better when you're struggling or not well right it it hurts even more or something and i i relate to him so much anytime i i go downtown cincinnati it it is like soul crushing to me mm -hmm. how how different it is right it, it's, it's just it's not the city that we grew up in at all and it's it makes me sad and I think for a lot of the same reasons, uh, probably some different, but I don't know, that feeling of nostalgia where I think for him, just like me, a, lar a large part of it is those people you were with when that place was different aren't there, and you're in a, in a new place by yourself a lot of the time. Right. And it, it's it's a strange feeling, but I, I just really liked, I really like how they do that and they handle his like mourning or sorrow to accept a, a, a new change, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I definitely, um, I haven't seen that episode yet, but I, I understand that feeling i feel it, it every time i go go back to cincinnati there is a um you know and, and fucking p hill man there is you know there's a lot of it started with you know the houses in the area and they're, they're kick-ass old houses yeah you know but there are people are buying them up and flipping them and it you know it, rightfully so it, price it, yeah, now. Yeah. it makes sense to do it because they're you know the, the houses have good bones to them my the house that I grew up in until I was like ten or eleven just sold a few years ago, but the the listing pictures, the inside is so it's so incredibly different. They gutted it and they, you know, they completely redid the inside. Um, like I don't know how bad it got that they had to do that, but yeah, it's all, almost completely unrecognizable. I hate that. Yeah. That feeling makes me so uncomfortable. Like, for, like I, that's part of the reason with, with this house, you know, it is an old as fuck house and I, we are doing shit to it, but we want to try to keep it as true to what it is. You know, like we're looking at siding and shit and like, we don't want to get like, you know, we don't, we're not like, you know, ball until we're falling. So we can't, you know, put on like really good siding, but like we want to get something that's at least looks like, you know, it could be wood, you know, or it could, it could be the original shit, you know, like it's not going to be perfect, but it, we want it to look nice. We want it to still match the, the style that it yeah. was intended, you know, and like the carriage house in the back, it's like, it's a dope fucking, it's, you know, falling and it needs a lot of work but it's just it'd be such a shame to let that go away it's so cool it's like the number one compliment we get when people come over and they they pull in the driveway and they see that and they're like wow check this shit out and it's like yeah i know it's fucking wild it's <laughs> fucking it used to have horses and carriages and shit in it <laughs> there's a fucking trough in the back man like so I have this really specific spot in the woods that means a lot to me, mm -hmm. Mount Airy Woods. And I go there a couple times a year, and I, I haven't gone this year. I was supposed to go last week, got sick. So I'm going to go soon. And um, this specific spot I've been going to for over a decade now, right? It's like a... Mm -hmm pilgrimage and I, about five years in i hadn't been there in like six months or so and i showed up and i guess a sewage line for the city runs through this part of 
the woods Mm -hmm. (laughs) and they bulldozed and cut like a 50 foot swath of trees down for like four miles in the middle of the woods jesus like, like right through my spot through the creek every just like destroyed right and it it was like heartbreaking to me i was so upset cuz it no longer could be a place i could forget about the rest of the world it was like the rest of the world crept into what was a special place for me and uh yeah, just trying to like adjust to that was really fucking hard. And it's been another five years. And now the woods has started to come back. And the trees might be shorter there and stuff, but it it feels like it's closer to what it's supposed to be again. And it's been mm-hmm. really kind of interesting to, you know, ever so many months come back. And you can't really perceive it getting better slowly, but it's like uh like healing, like forgetting, like shit changes and you do kinda have to adjust until it no longer feels uncomfortable. Yeah. There's a yeah, lot of fuck man. A lot of uncomfortable things out there. But I, I don't know. They get easier to deal with, too. Yeah. It just made me think of uh, Stanberry Park over there. I'm in uh, Mount Washington. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder how that old fucking tree is doing. Yeah. Dude, there's one in a different part of Mount Airy by the Arboretum. That there's uh, there used to be a bench in the woods by this particular spot that Every spring, the entire forest floor is wildflowers, Mm -hmm. and it's, like, so fucking beautiful, but there used to be this metal bench there, and I guess it rusted over the years, and it sank into the ground, so there's no longer any legs to this rusted bench, and it just sits on the forest floor, and in the spring, it's just a rusted bench on the grass surrounded by wildflowers and it's so fucking good you could walk right past it and not notice it and all of a sudden there's like the perfect seat for you to to sit with the flowers so so good it's fucking cool i love that shit man i want to go to a park i want to go to a a forest yeah we got them up here i just that is the only bummer of having a job that's so hyper seasonal in the summertime is the summer. Yeah. The short period of like dope summer we get up here. I mean, it's, I love the job. That's the other thing is I fucking, I wouldn't trade it at all, but man, it would be uh, next year. That's what we we keep talking about. Like next year we're going to, you know, what we what we did this year was so exponentially busier than last year that we can we can plan now for for next year and it might it might still get better but it's also like we're coming out of covid shit so it might there might reach a uh, maybe not critical mass but we might slow down on the the upswing a little bit but yeah. planning planning to be able to take some time off cuz man I would love to go camping in the in the up. summertime up here in like the Michigan wilderness, there's um, if I drive like four hours north of here uh, up by Mackinac, there's a dark sky park. Ooh. You go, go up there in midsummer. I think it's the is it the Geminids? I don't know. The Perseids. I... It's one of the one of the meteor showers. The one in the summertime. That sounds dope as fuck. I'd love that. I was up there for I was up there for it a few years ago, and it was so cool. To, to go up there again and actually yeah. we, were, we were there for like a weekend kind of thing and like if i could go up there for like you know five days did you go with your dad oh yeah i'd love to yeah. uh I, I, did you oh no i went with um the girl i was dating at the time gotcha those pesky girls right <laughs> it, it was it was nice because um the weather that weekend was shit 
And I, I really like the primitive camping. I like to like yeah. go, you know, not like primitive, primitive camping. What that usually means to people is like you go and like you, you know, chop down your own fucking wood and you hunt your food and whatever. Like, fuck that. I'm not, I'm going to bring some logs from a, you know, <laughs> a, a store or whatever. I might, you know, if I need to. You have to break cut into the some, wood. I don't want to cut down a tree if I don't have to. That's stupid. You just find logs. There's nature gives you. And nature food. gives you logs, and sometimes they're just on trees that you have to cut down. <laughs> you cook your fish on a rock. Yeah, <laughs> that's the yeah, the other one is like I'd usually bring a um, like a cooler full of food. Yeah, you got to bring a cooler. Yeah, I make it nice. You know, it's it's enjoyable. I love that. I love that new saying. That's a good one. Go touch grass. It's time to to get terminally offline oh, <laughs> I, I don't know this is the the year i've had the least amount of, i'm normally a different <laughs> a different shade of race by this point of the year <laughs> yeah. Actually, it, that that's what uh phil and i had been talking about where you're we like you know i i call you a white boy all the time but i because like, i forget all the time that you're you know you got darker skin if you go out in the fucking sun every now and you goddamn goth kid. <laughs> it's so weird. This is the first <clears throat> first full year of no no sun. But uh, what the fuck was I gonna say? What were we saying? <laughs> um, you were talking about races. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I really I there's a Earl <clears throat> sweatshirt album. Called I don't like shit. I don't go outside, <laughs> <laughs> and I I'm realizing more and more all of the work I did outside was purely for necessity. I'm so fucking like it's not. I love being outside and working with my hands, but I never ever want to do poor people jobs again. I'm, <laughs> I'm so done with digging holes or yeah, moving dude. sand. <laughs> Yeah, that shit sucks. <laughs> Breaking rocks. I'm so cool on that, man. <laughs> I had I had too many years worth of sun condensed into too short of a time. I'm gonna I'm gonna be willing to go Marilyn Manson white for a couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> see, there has to be people out there that are like that do that for a living and are so goddamn proud of it. Like they love, yeah. they love the job so much. There has to be those people, but I can't imagine there's many of them because that work Not fucking many. sucks. That's like every, every roofer I've ever met says like, nah, the job sucks ass. The, the like, guy the, I money's did, decent, but the job sucks. Yeah. The guy I did most of my work with my buddy, Alex, I doubt he'll hear this, but I, I love you, Alex. He, he feels that way. He, he takes tremendous pride in, in all of the jobs we we've done. <clears throat> and I don't think he ever fully understands when I, I, I just, I don't give a fuck about it at all. I, I always do the work as if I really care about it because right, I, yeah. want, I want to take pride in the work and do a good job for people. But I could not give a fuck. Like I, I don't give a fuck about my own yard or my own wall. I don't put art on my walls. I don't, I don't right. <laughs> plant flowers. I don't, I don't give a fuck about anything. I, I can't truly imagine caring about doing all of the jobs I did for people, you know? Yeah. But he, he truly cares about it. And which I think I really, we've said this so many times. Anytime someone's passionate about something, it's really cool to watch and it's really cool that they care about something, especially as a person who doesn't care about much. Anytime someone else is passionate about something, like, fucking love it so it's yeah it's, that's always huge yeah it's cool when somebody cares about something because i don't know we're in a world of so many people who don't care about much besides themselves um but he he always really cared about that type of stuff i took pr pride in his work i always like en i enjoy i respect the especially the landscaping and shit i always thought it was cool or like even just like upkeep. Like when I lived in apartments, though, it was always so easy to just be like, "Fuck it, I don't." Yeah. Um. This isn't my responsibility to make this 
to work, you know, I, I don't have any control on what the outside of this apartment building looks like or what they do with right. this broken ass fountain that's been out in the front that, you know, is just overgrown with dead weeds and shit. Yeah. So I just, I, I never cared about it. It never bothered me. It just wasn't a thing that I was concerned about. Now that I have my own house, it is very, very different. Yeah. It's I, been cool to watch you kind of I, go through that. Coming outside and, you know, catching the lawn on my way out of the, you know, the driveway thinking like, oh, I got to go home and use the weed eater when I, you got to, you know, break out the, some lawn care shit when I get home. Yeah, go eat some fucking weed when I get home. I will say I definitely enjoy landscape stuff more than pretty much anything else. Yeah. It well, feels so zen. Yeah, that's, I feel like that's more, a lot more meditative than fucking yeah. digging trenches. Oh my God. They they build machines to dig trenches for you. Especially I have like deformed mutant bones in my feet and I'm like <laughs> kicking a shovel for hours and I'm <laughs> like this is gonna hurt for six months. <laughs> what am I doing? I'm about to make twelve dollars. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, Do you pay I, for pay for your gas to get there, <laughs> buy your cigarettes and your your monster energy drinks on the way. Not enough for lunch. Maybe I'll, yeah. if I get lucky, I'll get a McDouble. <laughs> yeah, I could get a McDouble for lunch. <laughs> That'll fuel 12 more hours of <laughs> moving sand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next week, we have some options, but how do you feel about we play Russian roulette and winner gets a pizza? <laughs> <laughs> all right i'm out down of, with that out of state pizza bed yeah i'm down with that <laughs> we'll talk more i, I think we'll have fun with that and you say be- i mean i i got i got my gun right here we can <laughs> can play some russian roulette i'm fucking i'm you packing ever, i'm ready to go <laughs> oh shit <laughs> have you ever played no god no <laughs> i've i've seen I think I've either seen one or two people. I can't remember, but I've seen one person for sure. God damn, that was scary. Oh, I fucking bet. It's like, dude, nothing, nothing kills your can kill your buzz better than that. You're fucking <laughs> high stakes, low reward. You yeah, get to fuck. live another day. <laughs> you get to live another day, and I don't have to. <laughs> I don't have to worry about fucking getting an ambulance and dealing with the cops and shit. <laughs> and the- they don't clean up all that blood. You got hours of cleanup on your hands. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, not, not in my house, the fuck you don't. You go outside and do that shit. <laughs> you go down the block and you do that shit. Dude, one of my neighbors, uh, my parents live, nice neighborhood, nice, nice house, big mm-hmm. houses. They have relatively good money. One of the neighbors was a doctor. And he didn't want his family to have to clean up all that mess. So he just walked out to the front yard and killed himself. In the (laughs) front yard. Dude, fully visible from the street. Oh, my God. Just laid on the front yard. (laughs) Shot himself. Which is actually pretty gangster. (laughs) It it is. But holy fuck. Jesus fuck, dog. (laughs) It's pretty pretty wild. I mean, I I give him props. At least you're thinking ahead. You're trying to minimize some suffering. But holy fuck, that's gruesome. Especially yeah. a, he was a doctor. Yeah, fuck. It's like your kids take the school bus to school. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> daddy's taking a nap yeah. outside. He goes outside and does that, and immediately the yellow bus pulls up down the street. <laughs> Full of kids. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, that's dark shit. Uh, I, th- I think that's a good place to end it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, everybody, have a good night. Bye. That's what we call the, the COVID episode. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, thanks again for listening, everybody. Seriously, though. <laughs> if, you, if you paid attention this long, you still like our show. <laughs> then you're uh, pretty... Yeah, people should hit us up more. Yeah. If you make art or make music, send it to us. If you just think we're fucking idiots or want to fight about something dumb, we said. Because I, I, 
listening to the I have to edit these episodes and I say so, <laughs> so much stupid shit. <laughs> If you listen to like a full episode, there's not that many people doing that. So email us, reach out. I think it's cool when people say stuff. It's really yeah. cool. So we're we're way more accessible than you think we might be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we we both have full time jobs, but <laughs> we we see. We'll the, drop uh, everything I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Someone's like, "Hey, I listen to the show. <laughs> we're sharing that email back and forth." <laughs> <laughs> oh god damn oh yeah fun stuff next week yeah damn right oh shouts out to uh, approaching human uh thank you for the use of his music you can find his work on soundcloud at approaching dash human yeah thanks john thanks for offering to give me stuff while i was sick that was cool good man <laughs> yeah uh, make sure to check out the show page at trash cats trash cast on instagram for news and arts from the show Check out Facebook for the memes facebook for the memes if you're super bored you can check out my trash yard on instagram at Skyzix, S-K-Y-Z-I-C-X. I uh, got, actually got new stuff on the way soon. Sooner than I thought, so that'll be cool. Check out things we shouted out. Check out Solo Show on Instagram yeah. for some cool stuff. Uh, Shane Gillis had a stand-up on Netflix. Who did you shout out? Droppy's always cool. Oh, yeah, I, Droppy. Yeah. I feel like you, you shouted out something. Uh, the Bear... And shouts out to the bear, <laughs> to the bears, <laughs> uh, and, and whatever, whatever you feel like looking up is. <laughs> yeah, go go look up whatever. Shouts you out want to, to Wikipedia, <laughs> <laughs> the real the real terminally online. Go yeah, go uh, instead of okay. Look, you can go donate four dollars to Wikipedia, or you donate two dollars to Wikipedia, and then two dollars. <laughs> We get the referral fee. That's yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's we have right. no website or PayPal set up. Just, yeah, just, just take two dollars, throw it in the trash, and think of us. Can't you send? Oh, I was thinking of Skype. I was like, can't you send money on Instagram? No, <laughs> that's gonna be all worse today. That classic <laughs> trash.